Okay, no. no. Interesting. Tell me about the interplay between ketamine and stellate because they seem to be, uh, many providers seem to be doing those hand in hand. How does ketamine work? How does ketamine work with a stellate? How does someone take it? Ketamine is an extremely interesting molecule. It does, does all sorts of things. As you know, if you give a bun, somebody a little bit, it helps with pain. We have protocols in the ER for pain control. If you give them a lot, it puts them out for surgery. And kind of in the middle there is where the dosing that we find helps with depression primarily or treatment-resistant depression. Um, so the interplay between the two, we've actually anecdotally, we've seen that a person has stellates, has, has a stellate or two and ketamine, they do better than if you just have a stellate. Um, there's a paper coming out in the, in the near future that is looking at that question specifically. So we did uh, PCL5 and Beck screening. So it's tr a PTSD um, screening tool and a depression screening tool on a, a group of patients. And we did them before and after. Um, the improvement that we saw in the PTSD metrics was about 50% drop in the, in the symptoms of PTSD with just the stellate. And then the the uh, depression metric dropped by about 60%, 56% or so. When we did the stellate and then we did ketamine as well, we got an additional 20% improvement on both of those metrics. So yeah, they work together. How long does that last? That's a good question. I always tell people, this will help with what has come before. This does not help with what comes next. If you get sued or divorced or whatever, come on back and see me again. And that has to do if with the PTSD. If you have to go to the DMV, no. DMV, yeah, sure. Yeah. Go through another pandemic, you know, yeah. whatever. Um, so yeah, the, that's with the stellate ganglion block. Ketamine, the the way that it usually works when you're doing an IV ketamine treatment series is you do six sessions over the course of a couple weeks or so. That that six sessions is the initial treatment. After that six sessions is done, you usually will need a booster. If it's one month, three months, longer, kind of depends on you and how you feel. So we let patients kind of dictate when they come back for a booster. But the, the benefits that we see with ketamine, we know that we're probably going to need to maintain that with a once monthly infusion instead of a once daily medication. That's kind of a lot. Um, I mean, don't you think that's kind of a lot? What do you mean? The relief that they would get from ketamine, would it be the same as the relief? For example, let me say this clearly. Would the stellate be more likely and more effective to say treat the PTSD component versus maybe ketamine is more likely to treat more of a depression component? Perfectly so, absolutely. Okay. And that's part of the screening process. If somebody comes in and they're more PTSD heavy in their symptoms, we will recommend, let's do the stellate ganglion block and see I where see. you go. Because that can be months to years, the, the effects that we get from that. If they're primarily the the symptoms they're dealing with are depressive, then we think, well, it's probably going to be ketamine and integration therapy that will help that person mm -hmm. the most. And then that would make sense because whatever the, the reason is that they're getting depressed might not be cognitive. It could be who knows why. Maybe they're predisposed at you know, various reasons that they would need to maintain whatever it is that uh, – because it doesn't – it wouldn't be typically one thing. Right. Right, so that that would make sense. And it also is like to have people like you who do what you do with, from a functional medicine standpoint, is it a vitamin D issue? Is it a testosterone issue? There's a bunch of other underlying things. That perhaps that should be sorted out before totally. you seek mental health care. But yes, that's-, that's it Likely should. Likely should. Um, but yeah, that can definitely, and then some people are just more prone to depression. Mm -hmm. Are there other agents used alongside of the stellate um, or maybe we move to other kind of agents? I mean, there's there's a bunch of molecules ones that are that out there. that you feel work really well. Yeah. For the conditions that are most meaningful to you, maybe that's PTSD, anxiety, depression. Yeah, I mean, those are the big three. Top top three I, mental health diagnoses, obviously. Um, of the, there are other molecules that are extremely exciting. You know, MDMA is out there, psilocybin is out there, ibogaine is out there. You know, there's a lot of that kind of medication or you know, medicines that are available, there are legal challenges that come with those, if you're staying in the country especially. Um, and I think most of the time when, when we are crafting treatment plans, I usually stick to the ones that are you know, legal and on label in the US. Now, not saying those other ones aren't good. It's probably just a matter of time. Yeah, yep. MDMA just kind of got a black eye and, and hopefully that will, you know, you gotta- How come? 
Well, it was going through the regulatory process with the FDA and it got rejected. They asked for more studies to be done. Okay. Um, and I don't know, it's sad. I think we're, it needs to be done safely. And that's something that is true of any kind of the, any of these medicines, especially ketamine. You know, recent recent yeah. events show us that that it's not completely innocuous, and it needs to be done in a safe manner. Um, I think it's good to have regulatory oversight. It's good to do things to keep people safe. I, I agree. With so you too. I'm not, you know, it will come okay. as you say. The things that are supposed to come will come, and once they are ready for prime time, we'll add those things into the armamentarium of medicines that we use to treat these conditions. For now, we're using what we got. Do the best we can with what you got. Thank you.